absolutely. It, it's, it's definitely that. It's a desire not to uh, boost o overall spending. It's reflective of the fact that real wages have been relatively subdued over the last few years. We've gone through patches where they're positive, such as now, but overall it's been pretty subdued. But actually looking at that 1.2% headline number, that's still pretty low, isn't it? And you know, we have to contrast that and all of the CPI data that we've had out recently with a Bank of England that still seems uh, relatively keen to increase interest rates almost regardless of the, of the Brexit situation. So this would be another factor that I think would make Mark Carney consider does he actually need to uh, raise rates further at this point. So as you, as you drop that piece of information into that big machine you have that mm -hmm. does screens and throws up value opportunities for you or appropriate defensives, What's coming, coming out of the other end of the machine? Are you finding anything in the UK that you consider a decent investment choice at this point? It's mean, very uh, tough to find overall value in the UK. I mean, if you take the UK market, it's now one of the cheapest globally in terms of a forward uh, price to earnings uh, ratio basis. It's around 12.8 times. Europe has actually been ticking up. It's around 13.3 times, and, uh, and, and the US has lofty heights of over 17. So optically, the UK looks cheap. We've discussed many times here the, that sterling still determines a lot of the fate of the, of the large cap. And with the political situation, um, not only in terms of the Conservative Party, but also Brexit, I mean, it really is becoming more of a gamble. What jumps out at the moment, this market cycle, is that things have been getting so weak and optimism has been fading so much that you're finally getting consolidation attempts in key parts of the market where it's not happened before. Now, the supermarket business in the UK is one area where there have been attempts to consolidate, but it's failed because of the regulator. And if you look at the numbers today from Sainsbury and Asda, both of these businesses were almost going to be merged until that deal fell over. Both of them have seen their market share drop. Do you think we are going to be back on in terms of some deal making in the sector, maybe with a, a company that has a smaller market share? Because if you tally up Sainsbury and Asda, as you get to a 30% number that is more than Tesco, do you think we could see it at a lower level with some of the other key players? at some point because there's clearly sure. motivation to do so. Absolutely. I, I think if you have a bit of weakness between two uh, companies, that actually kind of makes that argument better in terms of the, to the uh, Competition Market Authority, makes that argument that actually a deal that needs to be done rather than it's about hoovering up market share and it's about powerful allies uh, joining. So definitely that's uh, that's a factor. But probably we might need to see further weakness to make the argument that actually it's in the interest of the consumer or particularly it's giving choice to consumers still. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.